So, can you be sent to prison for saying that photograph of Kate Middleton was photoshopped? Well, obviously, no. But can you be in any, any sort of legal bother for saying it was photoshopped? Almost certainly no. But to justify the clickbaity headline, let me explain a little thing about trademarks. Because the issue here is that Photoshop is a trademark. Um, it's the trademark of the Adobe Corporation. I'm going to get all Alan Partridge here and say, stop calling it Tannoy. It's a trade, it's a brand name. Um, but Adobe take this very, very seriously. They do try to protect their brand. Um, and in all their sort of legal blurb and their terms and conditions, they have some, uh, they set up all their rules about how to use um, their, their, their trademarks. And they're quite funny, really, because uh, they go through all the terms and conditions, but then they give you some examples. Um, so one, for instance, trademarks are not verbs. And it literally says that on their page. So, correct. The image was enhanced using Adobe, little r, Photoshop, little r, software. Incorrect. The image was photoshopped. Also, trademarks are not nouns. So, correct. The image pokes fun at the senator. Incorrect. The Photoshop pokes fun at the senator. Um, they're very keen. Always capitalise and use trademarks in their correct form. Correct. The image was enhanced with Adobe R, Photoshop R, Elements, capital, Software, incorrect. The image was photoshopped with a small p, also incorrect. The image was photoshopped with a large p, incorrect. The image was Adobe R, photoshopped. Trademarks must never be used as slang terms. I mean, I'm not sure who wrote this. It sounds like it was Nancy Mitford. Correct. Those who use Adobe are Photoshop are software to manipulate images as a hobby, see their work as an art form. Incorrect. A Photoshopper sees his hobby as an art form. Incorrect. My hobby is Photoshopping, so watch it out, Kate. Um, there you go, you see, they can nicker for that. Um, trademarks must never be used in possessive form. I mean, this is like getting all like really sort of <laughs> like grammar police. Correct. Those who use Adobe Photoshop software, I'm going to stop saying capital and little r's, to manipulate images, um, oh sorry, um, the new features in Adobe Photoshop are impressive. Um, I like the fact they put that as a correct example. Incorrect. Photoshop's new features are impressive. I mean it's so tempting to put something out saying Adobe say their own software is unimpressive. Um, Trademarks are proper adjectives and should be followed by generic terms they describe. Correct. The image was manipulated using Adobe Photoshop software. Incorrect. The image was manipulated using Photoshop. And they also have a bit of a thing about abbreviations. I mean, like I say, it is very Nancy Mitford. Trademarks must never be abbreviated. Now, that'll be news to SO, because uh, that's standard oil. Correct. Take a look at the new features in Adobe Photoshop software. Incorrect. Take a look at the new features in PS. Um, but the problem for Adobe is because Photoshop has become what we call a sort of generic trademark. Um, if your brand is so successful that people actually just start using your brand name generically, you can lose the rights to it. I mean, the classic example examples are Hoover and Kleenex. You can put a sign up saying, you know, we sell Hoovers. Or, you know, I'm going to do the hoovering, even if you're using a Dyson. And similarly, you know, pass me a Kleenex. Um, you know, store brand tissues will be okay as well. Um, so that's something you have to be very, very careful of. Um, there's a couple of things here, because, like, the Tarzan books are in copyright in some jurisdictions still, uh, depending on the length of the copyright term after the death of the author. But there is a case to say that um, the actual phrase, the name Tarzan, you can just use it to describe sort of, you know, that concept of the feral child being brought up by animals. Similarly, you can use the word TARDIS, even with the capital or even in all capitals, as it properly is, because it's time and relative dimension or dimensions in space. Um, but you can use the word TARDIS in say, a description of a property to imply that it's actually surprisingly spacious on the inside. Uh, it doesn't actually have to be trans-dimensional or anything. Um, it just has to appear to be bigger. Um, 
speaking of the TARDIS, and like I said, this is going to be a big stream of consciousness thing. Uh, but speaking of the TARDIS, it's quite funny because the BBC lost the IP rights. Uh, sorry, the, the Metropolitan Police, you know, who obviously have police boxes, including that one at Earl's Court still. But they lost the IP rights in blue police boxes to the BBC. Uh, that all went all the way to the tribunal. And the tribunal said, well, no, to be honest, these days, if you sort of show anybody a blue police box, they're going to say Doctor Who. They're not going to say Dixon of Doc Green. Um, the police can still, if they wish to do so, produce police boxes without falling foul of the design rights. But what they can't do is they can't actually sell any police box merchandise. Only the BBC can do that. Um but yeah, I mean, trademarks are a very interesting thing because obviously it's all about brand protection. And the test for trademark infringement is, first of all, might it cause confusion? Might somebody think that they're buying a legit product when they're not? They're buying sort of a generic product or something like that, um, you know. Uh, we get into all things like called passing off. Uh, but the idea is, does it sort of diminish the brand? But you can use trademarks legitimately so long as you make it clear that you know you're not associated with the actual company so for instance if you sell car spares um, you can list all the car spares and you can use the logos even if they're not original sort of you know manufactured products if they're OEM products in other words they're you know built by somebody else but they fit you could put Ford car parks and use the Ford logo you know Land Rover and use the Land Rover logo, so long as you made it clear that you weren't an official Ford or Land Rover um, stockist. Um, and interestingly, like I say, to pad this out um, a little bit, um, you cannot patent a connector or an interface. Um, so what do I mean by that? Well, anything that connects, whether it's like a USB port or an electrical plug, or, you know, printer ports or anything like that. You can't actually patent that. So even if you invent a really funky way of making a connection like USB, you can't, you don't have any IP rights. And the reason for that was to stop car manufacturers making it so you could only buy their own brand products. Because what they used to do is they would make the oil filters have a particular connector so that only certain oil filters with that connector would connect to their vehicles. And then when people made their own brand oil filters, they said, aha, we've patented, or we've attempted to patent um, that connector. So the courts have said, well, no, um, you can't do that because that's a backdoor way of just um, enforcing a monopoly. Um, so there you go. Um, like I say, sorry to be a bit clickbaity, but while all this Kate thing was trending, I just thought I'd mention it because it just sort of came to mind. Um, I mean, I'm, you, you know... You know, people have said, oh, it's photoshopped, and apparently the official explanation is, no, somebody should just use the Pixel 8 feature, which is, you know, trying to get kids to all look and smile in the same direction is impossible. So you just take a load of photographs, and the software just goes, right, I'll try and get the best face for everyone and stick it in there. So I'm, you know, sure lots and lots of people have done that. Because um, I know trying to take pictures of my dear departed doggo was a nightmare. Because it's like, Sass, look at me, look at me. It's like, what, what is it? Something interesting behind me. No, no, look this way, look this way. And I was always envious because one of my friends, uh, she had, also had brilliant photographs of her dogs. And I asked her what her secret was. And it turned out that she used to just put cheese in her hair. So she'd be taking the photograph and the dogs would just be like staring going, oh, wow, you've got cheese. So that's a little tip. So maybe Kate Middleton could have avoided all this row just by, assuming her kids like cheese, putting cheese in her hair. So there you go. Anyway... As always, hope you found that vaguely interesting, vaguely useful, vaguely accurate. It's nice to be back with you all. I've missed you. Um, sorry I'm not outdoors, but yet again, it is siling it down. I even had a look at sort of places outside I could shelter, but it's torrential and dark out there. Uh, but I've just got back after my hearing, um, and I might have another Tales for the Bar <laughs> for you. Uh, because I was doing a sort of rather tricky, as I said, driving matter, driving matters, uh, and it's fairly inevitable my client would not be driving back. So you very, I, I, as part of my full service, I said, oh, "All right, I'll drive back," and he very kindly said, "Oh, you like Range Rovers? I'll, you can borrow mine if you want." 
but unlike my 17-year-old one held together by gaffer tape, his was the brand new 5.5 litre V8 twin supercharged. And I think you can guess what happened on the way back. Uh, but like I say, I'll wait till the paperwork comes through and see if I can get another Tales, tales from the Bar for you. Oh yeah, um, like, subscribe, share, all that sort of thing. Because um, you know, you're not doing it for me, you're doing it for Lord Loverduck and Cappy Barrister, who are now illuminated. I got that for £1.95 um, in the charity shop. And I thought I could use it because I could sort of say, oh, hashtag Cappy Barrister, because it's meant to be a hash mark apparently.